Hi guys, this is Yashay Savani, also known as Coding Assassin, and today I want to share with you a project that I've been working on over the past few days that I find really exciting. Um, um, before we actually get into the project, a little bit of a disclaimer. The final product of this project is by no means the most complex so, um, final product you've seen. Probably seen more final, better final products um, in an introductory class in electronics but the technique which I've used to reach this final product is um, probably one of the most complex techniques I've used and um, yeah without much further ado I present to you my circuit so I hope you can see it it's basically just one breadboard and battery manual battery and yeah so basically this is my project or my circuit what this is is this is an FSM of finite state machine for those of you who don't know what a FSM is or a finite state machine is, these are the circuits which make up all the computational devices you use. So basically, the um, CPU in your computer, the graphics card, the um, RAM, whatever, all every single com device which does computation which you've used uses um, thousands and billions and billions of these little little um, FSMs, finite state machine. Let's get into it. Basically, let's show. I'll show you the final product first and I managed to turn this on yeah so as you can see here um, the input this basically FSM is a 2 bit FSM with one input and one output don't worry about this LED we'll come back to that later but basically um, the input is this momentary push button and the output is this LED here this one not this one this one and when and basically how this works is when you push the button and you it's release it 30. It switches state. So if it's on, it turns off. If it's off, it turns on. So just to show you, that I'm not joking. This is a momentary switch. If I press and release it, it turns off. Press and release it, turns on. So off, on, off, on. I keep doing this all day, but I think you get the idea. And yep, yeah, that's about it. It's two bit, um, two bit um, FSM with one input, one output. Now let's get into the nitty-gritty details about this. We start. We we'll start here at the right. Um, we find a seven eight zero five five volt regulator. What happens is these three um, ICs here, one, two, and three. These three ICs are CMOS ICs, a really sensitive CMOS ICs, which need a rail to ground voltage of five volts or lower. But basically. Um, 5 volts, I pick 5 volts, so I had this 9 volt battery lying around and I wanted to use that to power my circuit, but because 9 volts is too powerful for these ICs, I used I had to use a 7805 um, voltage regulator to um, basically drop the voltage to from 9 volts to 5 volts. And um, yeah, this 10 microfarad capacitor and this 1 microfarad capacitor moves the input voltage. So basically what happens is when you turn this on or when the uh, states are switching in these um, ICs, there are sometimes a little bit of glitches on the um, power line and these 1 microfarad and 10 microfarad capacitors basically smooth out these glitches and make sure that there's a smooth constant power supply to the entire circuit. Moving right along, here we have an LM324 quad op amp used in a relaxer square wave circuit. What that means is basically it's a fancy way of saying it generates a square wave. And um, it generates a square wave at 7 hertz, that's 7, seven um, times per second, 7 cycles per second. And that is determined by this 10, 100 kilo ohm resistor here, this one, and this one microfarad capacitor so this RC network determines the oscillation or the frequency with which this circuit is synchronized to so this is a synchronizer basically a clock for the entire circuit uh, and yeah I've made it so that it works at 7 Hertz so this LED is 7 times per second I'm not sure if the video can get it but you can take my word for it it's 7 times per second and yeah 7 Hertz this generates 7 Hertz so um, yeah Next up, we have our 74HCT74 um, dual D flip flop. Um, fancy word. Basically, it's a two bit register. So, yeah, 
two it's if you know what ram is it's basically two bit ram it stores two bits that's zero one is one bit so two of those bits the upper channel here is for one bit and the lower channel here is for the other bit so two d flip-flops it's a d flip-flop so yeah two d flip-flops now what happens is that when the oscillator when the oscillator goes from low to high whatever is there on the d d pin of this will be stored inside memory in this um ic yeah all right so next up is my uh, my 74 hc00 um ic's both of them identical they are called two input nand gates yeah basically two ic's each are called two input nand gates what that means is there are four nand gates in each of these ic's and they do the logic basically the logic which determines when this switch is pressed on and off um all the logic is done in these nand gates so yeah I've used for my circuit I only did six so I've used all four NAND gates on this IC but only the first two on this right hand side for this IC so yeah six NAND gates are required to make this circuit now what happens is the circuit runs at four states there are four possible states the circuit can be at so there's this state where it's the um output is high and this uh, basically the push button is off or zero low then there's another state when the push button is high when it's high and the output is high then when the push button is low and output is low and the push button or the input is high and the output is low yeah kind of complex but basically there are four states and those four states are stored in this um flip-flop as i mentioned before that two bit flip flop so these two bits would stop would be able to stop four possible combinations and I've used those four possible combinations to store this the all the states which we've used here. Yeah, so that's um about it. If I can remember anything else. Yeah, so basically this if you're wondering what this LED is just basic um, power indicator. Power, no power, power, no power. So yeah, power indicator. Here we have, um, here there's a pull down resistor and a capacitor. The capacitor is basically a debouncer. When the push button is pressed down and released, there's sometimes a little bouncing which might, um, make, which might cause errors for the circuit. So this capacitor smooths that out, makes sure that there's a smooth transition from low to high and high to low when this push button is pressed. And this push, push, push button acts as a pull up uh, push button and this is a pull down. So when it's pressed, the um, circuit views it as a high, and when it's released, it's a low. The um, inputs are low. So yeah, I hope that well, that's about it. Uh, yeah. So um, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it might be a little bit complex, but um, yeah, probably some one of the most complex circuits I've made recently, and. Um, I'll try to make another video showing you how the process which I use to make the um, circuit like when from the basics from the conception of the idea to the Carnot map or whatever I used to simplify the logic to the final product itself and how I made that so I'll try to make another video on that but hopefully you can see um, you got the idea of what a finite state machine is and um, how you could use basic memory and logic to run or make or how um, logic is used to run your computers and your um, digital technology computational logic. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, I, like I said, I'm trying to make that other video as soon as I can. Um, thank you for watching.